Good morning. Starting about 10 years ago, these three themes started to appear in global business and industry, and they were driven by the motivation to bring factory labor back to the United States and Europe, which had been previously outsourced to Asia. Friendshoring is bringing supply chains to friendly countries. Nearshoring is setting up supply chains closer to the final customers. For example, setting up a factory in Poland to serve the markets in East Europe and one in Brazil to serve customers in South America. Reshoring is bringing the manufacturing to where the company is located. So American companies would set up factories again in North America, the UK, in the UK, and so on. This is all expensive and it involves hiring lots of high wage people in our home markets to replace lower wage factory workers in Asia. But there's an even bigger problem. These are not our factories. We are just buying from them and they're not our supply chains. Many of the industries that we're attempting to reshore, they were never our industries to begin with. China has near monopolies in the supply chains and manufacturing for batteries for electric vehicles. And South Korea and Japan are also big players. So these attempts to build an EV battery industry in Europe and in the US are already facing big problems because it's something we've never tried before. We've never built these batteries and we've never built factories for these batteries. And Chinese and Korean companies are years ahead of us. Europe is giving it a go, and so far it's not going well. Of the 16 big projects for battery factories in Europe, which are led by European firms, 11 of those are either paused or bankrupt. Contemporary Amperex technology is CATL, and they're by far the biggest producer now. And SDI is from Korea, and they're also in Europe. And 10 out of those 13 are still on pace to be completed and producing batteries there. CATL and BYD, they're the biggest Chinese car maker for EVs. They have a big head start and nobody can beat them on price, which is another problem. If you're hoping to build a factory that competes against them, you need a very high market price to compete and the prices for EVs are falling. Some of these failures have been spectacular. Northvolt is a Swedish company that just filed for bankruptcy and they reported cash on hand of $30 million, nearly $6 billion in debt, 6,000 employees across seven countries, and Volkswagen has a 21% stake in Northvolt. British Volt was the UK's attempt to build EVs at home, and even though they have a lot of positive publicity and government officials saying nice things, British Volt never produced an actual battery. They were building a $5 billion factory to create 3,000 jobs, and they had partnerships with Aston Martin and Glencore, which is a huge commodities trader. It never got the factory built, and they never got a battery built. Nissan's plans are on track in the UK because they partnered with a Chinese firm who can give them the batteries. Wired has the inside story on British Volt. Those people at Wired do an amazing job on their stories. It's what journalism is supposed to be. By now, British Volt was supposed to be up and running, producing lithium ion batteries. But as we go through the Wired piece, we can see that British Volt never really stood a chance. The founders of the company were Swedish and not English, and neither had experience with electric vehicles. They didn't have any technology, they didn't have any money, and they didn't have any customers. Nevertheless, the UK government stepped up and gave them lots of money, and that prompted Lotus and Aston Martin to sign agreements. Other companies put in $200 million, and that was in early 2022. In August 2022, the founders resigned after someone found out that one of them had committed tax fraud in Sweden. That's something that the government and the investors in the UK should have found out before giving them hundreds of millions of dollars. Pick up the phone, call someone in Sweden and say, before we give this guy $200 million, just a quick question, was he ever in trouble back home? So the founders are gone, the money is gone, and the company is gone. Wired goes deeper to see where the money went. It was all about image, form over function. The company wasn't building anything, and wasn't even trying to secure the supply chains to build anything. 
The two founders traveled by private jet and leased a $3 million mansion to stay in instead of just getting a hotel room. Office staff at British Volt were surprised when they were given expensive 35-inch monitors, which cost 900 pounds. By the way, those monitors cost around $100 at the most here in China, and not 1000 And Wired closes with this, which makes us wonder why they went to all the trouble in the first place. Even if British Volt were successful, it would not have moved the needle at all. The UK isn't even a factor in the EV space, and that would remain so, whatever happened at British Volt. China is almost the whole market. China supplies 80% of the world's batteries, and six of the top 10 battery makers are here. CATL is the biggest of them all, and they have 21,000 engineers working just in the research and development department. CATL's R&D department by itself is four times bigger than what Northvolt had working across their entire company. Europe has never been in this industry and they don't have any people there to start one now. Plus, setting up a factory is a lot harder than anyone thought and over a thousand processes need to be perfected independently. And China and Korea have already done the work on all of it. This whole quote is good. Making batteries is hard, high capital, tough market, high standards in the production and from customers. And the only ones who do it well are the ones who've been doing it for a long time. The companies that are cooperating with China are doing fine so far. Stellantis is teaming up with CATL and Renault is working with Envision Group, but that means that Europe is still dependent on China to get the batteries built. This headline from Inside EVs is a little more sensational than I prefer, but they go into the chemistry of battery design and manufacturing against the backdrop of a very public disagreement between Elon Musk of Tesla and Robin Zeng, the head of CATL. First, Tesla is a huge customer of CATL, and Musk and Zeng have deep respect for each other and have been business partners for years. Tesla's Gigafactory in Shanghai is their most profitable, and CATL is a supplier for that plant, and both Musk and Zeng are heavily invested in the success of Tesla here. CATL is also the battery supplier for Tesla's plant in Nevada. So this argument is strictly along engineering and scientific lines and not personal in any way. But it revolves around Tesla's commitment to build a cylindrical cell battery. And Tesla announced that it just built its 100 millionth 4680 cell of this type. 100 million sounds like a lot until we see that it's enough for only a few hundred Tesla Cybertrucks. Robin Zung is telling Musk here that CATL has looked hard at this problem and concluded that it won't work. Tesla is going the wrong way. Remember, CATL has 21,000 people on the job to figure out how to build the best batteries. Zung says that Musk doesn't know how to build a battery. Musk is great on the chips, the software, the hardware, the mechanical engineering, but he's just wrong on the batteries. The 4680 is going to fail and never be successful. Zung agrees with Musk on lots of other things, the future of EVs, the future of self-driving cars. And Zeng might even be wrong. I don't know. We'll see. But this is a discussion that only can happen at all with two guys who've been in the industry for a long time. And why did he warn Musk that Tesla needs to change direction? It's because they're business partners. Otherwise, Zeng wouldn't say a word. You don't interrupt the enemy when he's making a mistake. Robin Zeng is one of just a handful of guys in the whole world who can sit down with Elon Musk, tell Elon that what he's doing cannot possibly work, and then he's got 21,000 people in his labs who are doing it all better. Musk is the guy who last month caught rockets in midair, using chopsticks looks like. He's juggling rockets around in flight, and even NASA goes to him whenever they need something. Musk and SpaceX know reusable rockets, but Zeng and CATL know batteries, and he's warning his buddy Elon that he's heading off in the wrong direction. Back to Europe and the reshoring problem, then, this is who you're up against. 
you're competing against Musk and Zeng. You're up against Tesla and CATL and BYD. You're up against China and Korea. And you're starting from zero in an industry you've never been in before. This is the Li River, Guangxi province. Be good.